of who's who. Speaking of some of these players, uh, Traeger, Nubs, Landis, Phil, Oni, right there, rounding it out for Columbia College. And yeah, I do swear I remember Traeger's name here as well, Joe. That's another name that stands out to me. Yeah, I, I know of Traeger from a very, very long time ago. It's Columbia College team. Pretty solid. They, they've continuously gotten better over the years. And I mean, that experience is really getting under their belts and really making them a, a much more feared team in the collegiate scene. And we look at the other team, their matchup for today, Grand Canyon Esports. Example, Matumba, Lakitsuro, Bozaroni. And Klimps, I mean, Klimps we talked about, fellow caster. Uh, but Matumba, another one, another big name, I believe, coached for Outlast during the Element 1 season, if I recall correctly. It may have been Outlast, it may have been Hong Kong Rebels. One or the other. It was one of the two of them, I know. But a pretty decent team and a little bit of a better team, maybe. But not as strong as they were in their national champion ship winning team just a couple semesters ago but still this is mm -hmm. grand canyon no slouch no pushover team yeah they're definitely a team that has consistently been one of the better collegiate sides right Ac across the such as it is history of rainbow six collegiate so always a pleasure to watch them play and always to see a uh, pleasure to see what the next like generation of uh, gcu uh talent is uh able to put out there into the world in terms of their siege ability let's go ahead and take a gander at the maps here tonight on this holly halloween 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 chalet oregon border uh well one of those is a bit of a dub but the other two are are not uninteresting yeah i think at least for me i always find oregon and chalet more fun than a map like club or even cafe. oh yes yeah so if we're gonna get default maps we might as well get the good ones but you know i still would have loved to console it being thrown in there or something night haven so so close to being our map number three if we were to get there but hey, we got we got uh, old reliable on maps one and two. <laughs> old reliable, yeah. I must admit, Chalet is rapidly becoming uh, old reliable, isn't it? I bet after this yeah. uh, most recent Rainbow Six Siege major, it will definitely be the old reliable, uh, right up there with Oregon and and Cafe and and what have you, Clubhouse as one of those maps that everybody likes to play, which is a real hell of a transition. But here we are, ready to get started on our first match of the game. Which means I can take off this camo netting. I do not know how Nook does that. Uh, I can't believe hot. you even. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. First band coming through here. And uh, have we run into problems already? No, I, no, I no, think. Oh, we are. Yeah. We're good. We're good. Okay. A quick restart coming in. Dokai B is the first to be banned there. Relatively reasonable band coming into Chalet. One that shouldn't be surprising. Would advise watching a flores go here usually an operator that gets some fair play on chalet joe but really could be anybody yeah i think flores is really powerful i think doke even like isn't necessarily as strong on this map just because of it, but still can be very useful i think doke is like doke is a little bit too strong right now i, I must admit I, I think doke is in such a strong <laughs> place as ying goes off the board ying very important more towards you know taking sight executing even taking control early on right like maybe taking library if you have a mez player just throw a couple of candelas out walk right on in and you know i, I still think that does leave the flores up even a knock if possible knock still good you know I, you know may oh, still yeah. be able to make some sound but it doesn't mean that doesn't mean that the lack of information that you get on cameras when a knock is crouch walking somewhere isn't a super valuable thing to have it is true, and it still has advantages, still has frag grenades. I mean, they've, they've tried to curtail it a little bit, but she's still very solid, especially on a map like Chalet, which has a couple of kind of like sneaky entry points and sneaky routes. That said, I do think taking Fenris and Solus off the board, that's a very de facto ban phase in this day and age, right? Like they are incredibly strong defensive operators in their own right. Azami still will be left, though. Matumba's taking it right off the rip, and unfortunately going into the tech pause right away here as well for that one player on the gcu purple side to go ahead and get back in uh hopefully it doesn't take him too long sounds like he's loading in and we can get started but a lot of soft destruction being shown here by the attackers early on here joe which is essentially what you would expect second floor defense as well i never really know how i feel about taking those second floor office master bedroom sites i'm not a big fan of them to be honest 
Yeah, neither am I. I just think it's a little bit too much control. I think like Master is the pinnacle of just like angles, hard gunfights that the defense needs to take to try and hold control. Um, whether that's holding library, that's a big portion of it. Like I think you have to hold library and below. I just think it's too much space to hold, in my opinion. Um, more so where other areas you can be a little bit more dynamic in your room, whereas this, it's really holding down areas that aren't the easiest things to hold down. But with the Ying not on the board, it may make it a little bit easier, but you do see Brava, you do see Flores. Flores, as you noted, was very powerful. And Brava, insanely powerful on Chalet. So definitely mm -hmm. keep that in mind. Keep an eye out on those Brava drones, getting that hacking done. Um that's at least I love Brav on this map, right? Just so much potential. You could hack that main lobby cam and the blue cam, and that is half the map completely cut off just from those two things. It's beautiful. Well, there we go. In comes Valkyrie, another solid defensive choice right there. Strong operator across the board. Great for adding a little bit of uh, intelligence gathering here. Obviously, Brava, a bit of an issue when you play the Valkyrie. If you can't actually find the cams, you can take them down and turn them your own direction. We'll get a look at what this defensive setup is going to look like in the main. Uh, I would guess a pretty standard defense for this uh, site. You know, library corridor hold. Force him into an unflattering position there, trying to come in through the door piano. It's usually what we see. Interesting to see Frost, by the way. I, I didn't really mention that when we were talking about it, Joe, but it Frost has been nerfed. So um, I'm surprised to see her still getting some play. It's still a 1.5 and a shield. Um, can also provide you some information on window hop-ins, uh, especially for that K9 and slight window, right? Even though you can pick yourself up, even if it's it's not that much, right, and you still shoot them, it's still a sound cue for the defenders to really know that someone is hopping in a window. Um, at least takes their attention off of peeking certain things. Matumba does take down Zofia. Very big pick. Maybe not the greatest, you know, you could have taken down the nades. Hard breach or Brava, but still grabbing an early pick like that early on, setting up the tone. Beautiful, beautiful thing for them as Matumba on the Azami, getting a lot of value already. Right, yeah, getting a lot of value to start it off and, uh, you know, taking Phil down early, forcing those Zofia out as a key entry off the board. It's also some solid utility that would help in a situation like this, for example, just kind of open up that soft wall. But they're going to go ahead and go for the hard anyway, just get that open and get things rolling. But Tumble holding underneath on the Azami right there, of course, probably the strongest defensive operator in the game. Well positioned for those sort of solo holds. As you see the frost rolling across, that's Bonza Rosie Roni right there getting flashed, but it's Klimps who jumps in and takes Nubs down, and now three to five here in Columbia College, running into a brick wall of defense early on here in round number one. There's nobody even on the big window to watch any of this. Klimps should not be allowed to sit here at all with free reign as Matamba now finding a second one. The two experienced players on this team in the T3, T2 atmosphere of North American Siege, but Columbia College just not in the right positions at all and maybe that's bomb peak having a lot to do with it but gcu on the map pick of columbia college a great opening defense on probably the worst site on the map yeah probably yeah and, and i would actually agree right it was very solid they did an excellent job of kind of just swallowing the columbia attack the early pick in there as well really putting a dent in it i mean it's only round number one so you can't take too much out of it in terms of extrapolation but definitely a good start here for the gcu side and the right foot forward indeed as we look down to snowmobile snowmobile garage and wine cellar and bandit making an appearance always interesting to me joe to see how teams approach defending that garage door because some teams genuinely do not really try and hard breach denial it anymore uh they just kind of take it as a given that it's going to get breached and you sort of play around it and then some teams may actually try and make an active defense in this case we're going to see a choice here whether or not they're going to put those bandit batteries up on these back walls or they're going to focus on trying to hold the garage i think that's going to be a little bit difficult to hold the garage just because they don't have an azami to block off that drone hole uh, that's kind of a big thing right because you can prevent that bandit trick coming through by either zofia stunning through the drone hole nading the drone hole flashing doing all of those things to prevent that
bandit trick from coming through. Five seconds left. You have the Azami, throw a Kiva barricade on there, blocks off the, the drone hole. Have free reign. Bandit tricking, they don't bring it, so I don't think they'll be bandit tricking the front side. I really hope not, but if that's something that they're able to get away with, yeah, sure, go for it. And it looks like they are going to go for that front side as they have the impacts from Klimps to be able to impact trick that right side and the discs to be able to prevent that nade from getting too close to the bandit. Yeah, we keep you on the bandit here with a little bit of a mini game test of skill. It's always a little hard to be the person who's bandit okay. tricking. Out comes the first EMP oh, okay. too early. The coordination not there. And that'll be one of those exothermic pads gone. Oni waiting for the second one. We'll actually get Landis in position right here. And a little bit of confusion across the board between the two of them. They may actually have forfeited the entire idea and switched to going back to another direction. As a gunfight breaking out here on the top floor. Matumba is down. And that would be one kill for Phil, two kills for Phil. And Phil, the Zofia who died first last round, is in and has two. Not a great hold, at least at the start for GCU. They did such a good job burning out that utility, getting rid of one of those thermite charges, and that's really all they have, right? So now they're not going to be able to open up the hatch, not going to be able to open up really any of the other walls, but they have so much control of the map that it's going to now really force GCU to make a play and find a pick back, because in this 5v3, you can't let them execute that way. Attacker Nubs finding a kill onto Klimps on, I believe, first floor fireplace stairs and now yeah that information is going to come through the mel gonna find one oh. i'm not sure anything else is going to come through yeah it's going to be just fine that wall is going to get open but fazaroni gonna have to try and make something happen not gonna happen that's phil with his third of the round and columbia off a very very sketchy start to the round are able to find the picks that they need to get themselves right back into this game it was good adaptability on the side of Columbia. Honestly, they did not get deterred by the fact that they were struggling to open up the garage door. They just played it from different angles and maybe a little bit of knock on GCU purple, honestly, that they got so invested in that fight on the top floor. They lost those two bodies up in library corridor. Um, and yeah, obviously the vertical is important and controlling the top floor is important, but I don't know if it's worth, you know, losing two lives over there when you can maybe just potentially fall back and keep the fight going. But Maybe the aggression a little bit to be expected considering GCU was so strong on that first round, Joe, but a good reminder to them here in the early game that they cannot simply walk the over their opponents. And as many bombs as they can. No, they can't, and they still need to be at least a little bit cleaner with what's going on, right? I think Columbia is kind of giving GCU that opportunity to, you know, kind of close these rounds out a little bit earlier, but they still need to be clean, right? I, I think Columbia has kind of shown, at least to me, that... They've struggled to really get anything going unless GCU makes the mistake. But from what I've seen, right, Columbia doing a good job at, you know, capitalizing on the mistakes that GCU are making. But at least for me, from these first two rounds, I haven't seen anything from Columbia that is forcing out mistakes from GCU. So as long as GCU plays a little bit of a cleaner style of siege, forcing Columbia to really get active and, you know, do something, I guess, in a, a lack of a better term. They can get these round wins a lot easier, but that's going to have to be an adjustment that GC notices, and Hi. not sure they've been able to do that quite yet. Yeah, I agree. It's been a, it's you know, it's early days, plenty of time to do some learning. It's not been a long game so far, right? So they've, they've got times where they can consider how they want to change up the adaptability or what have you. Also, I mean, obviously, getting that first pick on that first round was highly beneficial to GCU. Columbia uh, more than happy to run with it when given the chance. Phil, the hero of the last round, the triple kill will not happen again. Matumba destroying them right there on the window over by Piano and then setting up in a different position. And there's the first pick, Joe. So I think that goes very much in the column favor of uh, GCU Purple here as this round continues. Yeah, round one was Matumba finding that early kill onto Phil and the round kind of sweeping towards GCU's control, and now it's going to be them again in a very similar situation. Maybe a different site. It is going to be Klimt and Matumba holding down the top floor, and two good operators for that, right? You have the C4 from the Mira facing all of that. You have the uh, Zami with the Kibas to try and at least, you know, board off some angles and make it a little bit easier, but that's Nubs finding a kill, I think, on the flank. That is a Wamai flanking basement blue with impacts in his hand that would completely prevent this wall from getting open but unfortunately 
getting taken down, not in the correct spot, and that's going to be Columbia College now getting the site open. And for Columbia, if they want to, they could just clear out dining and go for the bomb plant as they have enough control upstairs for that to happen. Ooh. They do just that, the mute. An ill-advised swing onto the breach into maybe three guns there. Oh, what a shot from Landis right there on the long bomb to take out Matumba on the Azami. And this is going from bad to worse here for GCU. Two defenders left now. Klimt's trying to play that long <laughs> sight line, looking for some sort of opening. Ikichiro getting hit from an angle I don't think they even expected. Quick check of the camera, and they'll double back. Klimt's shot down by Landis again, and a frag grenade from Nubs to finish it. And a brutal round by Columbia College right there. GCU not prepared for any of that. It just, you see what happened, right? They had a man advantage. You have someone flank up basement blue, giving a pick right on back. That's your Wamai with impacts to try and get that stopped. Then the mute finds himself stuck close on the breach and swings out into lobby with no information. And all of a sudden that is two kills right on back at Columbia College with an advantage. And that's the things that I'm talking about, right? Columbia punishing GCU on that, but... GCU, they're the ones making the plays that realistically, Corbick, they don't need to be making at all. Force Columbia to execute. Force them to do something because GCU had all the control of upstairs that they would need. It would have had to have been a full-on sight hit for Columbia, but they didn't even get to that point or need to get to that point because GCU are swinging before anything could happen. Hmm. Yeah, that's fair. I, I, like uh, some of those swings, I think definitely coming out of the GCU side, you were you were a little questionable, right? Like you can be an excellent gunner, but there's an inbuilt disadvantage on the defensive side where you do have to, you know, work with a machine pistol or just a machine gun or whatever. Whereas the other side, they do, you know, get assault rifles. Landis is playing with an assault rifle with a better scope. So if you're gonna try and challenge those long angles, especially on that kitchen dining site, I mean, you've got to be prepared for the clapback right there, right? That's just the state of the current meta. Um, so really putting them through a bit of a ringer, and I think there's a little, it, it sort of manifested, I will admit, it sort of manifested on round number two. It manifested again on round number three. Joe, I think there's a bit of a lesson in caution right there for the members of GCU, right? Like, you, you cannot walk over Columbia. You, you just can't. They're, they're gonna, they're, they're still a decent team, and they're gonna make me work for this. Yeah, especially on a map like Chalet, something that you've noted, right? The, the defenders, they have maybe those submachine guns, and that's what makes Chalet so difficult to attack or defend, I should say, is their gunfights that you have to take as a defender are not easy to do. So in those moments when you don't need to take those fights, or even just in general picking your moments to take those fights, you have to be very calculated with it, as if Matumba taking a good fight, finding an opening kill and blocking off everything. That's the power of the Azami and doing exactly what needs to be done for GCU to find the kills. Shots coming in right there. Phil picking up Bonzeroni, so they're keeping it even at four to four. Landis took a lot of damage. Phil finding another one. That's Klimt who's down, Matumbo in the backside. Oh. And what just happened right there? Nubs getting caught by their teammate, or their Nubs frag grenade catching their teammate Landis, and that is just unfortunate here. Now Oni, the only one left alive, creeping, creeping up the back stairs, knows that there's a zombie there. Now they know that CC Oni is there. They caught him on the camera. What are you gonna do? Uh, throw in a couple of flash grenades and just uh, run up there and hope for the best, Joe. I guess that's uh, <laughs> the strategy to be employed. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe prevaricate a little. See if you can bait him to come to you. GCU just needs to sit. They just need to sit. This is exactly what we we're talking about, Joe. You just need to sit. Yeah, and for a there second consecutive round, though, on Master, they're going for a solar take in Corbic. They didn't put anyone on big window. All of that real estate in that entire area completely gets shut down if you have a player big window and i don't know i i think columbia they you kind of see the flaws in their pushes when gcu don't give them the time mm -hmm. of day and don't swing out everything right just they sit on their hands a little bit and i mean i don't know i don't i'm not i'm not sure they just need to get themselves in a better spot just to, yes. oh no no not another uh, one. Oh no I will say that I don't feel like uh, Columbia College is doing a particularly good job of generating circumstances for 
positive gunfights, if that makes sense. Like, gunfights that are more winnable to them. They're not forcing the issue, right? A lot of the time in the past couple of rounds, especially the rounds where GCU lost, the gunfights were forced by GCU. Um, and if you look at the tail end of round number four, you see that kind of an action, right? Oni's just sort of uh, hovering on the stairs, and then you see, you know, the, the weight, the weight, the weight, Matumba, 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 he wants to take the gunfight, he wants to take the gunfight, he takes it, he loses it. A lot of that has, I think, dictated the pace of play for GCU, and like you said, just sit on your hands, you know, it's fine, like, you will get them eventually. Going back down to the kitchen Attackers site, you did lose one body here already, so the advantage solidly with GCU purple, but hopefully lessons have been learned about the long sight line. Yeah, that at least is the hope, and they do, I guess, inherently have a man advantage here, is GCU, so a big opportunity for them, and again, going back to the kitchen dining site, and they give it right back. You can't make this up! No, an unfortunate kill right there. The long bomb shot from Landis. Landis continuing to kind of pick people off. Landis finds another one. And that's a classic example right there. Did you need to challenge Landis at that particular moment? The answer is probably no, but Akichiro thought they had an opportunity, jumped on it, and then absolutely slotted up there on the top deck. Matumba now the next one to step in, trying to play the pixel peek, looking at the library corridor. Oh! Phil just racking him up, and it feels like every time in this round GCU has tried to swing, they have just been slaughtered for the effort. They just, it's not something they need to do. Like, we, we said it, I don't know how many more times I gotta say it. Just sit on your hands, make them push you. It's a 5v4. Oh, yep, Lord. It is. Nubs is down right there, a rough push. Traeger has returned here. Phil up on the top floor looking for Klimps, the last member alive. Klimps jumps the corner. Klimps destroyed in Columbia. A flawless round right there, gifted to them on a silver platter by the defenders. I mean, I don't know. How much, how much can we really analyze without just saying what happened? Yeah. I feel like there's no deep analysis oh, right. I could do you're here. Right. You know, I feel like everyone saw what happened there. I feel like we all yeah i would agree. we all saw that yeah it's unfortunate and and i i i think you're essentially right right like it, it's definitely one of those things where you're kind of like hey like you're walking into this and we're, we've belabored the point to death so i don't think there's a reason like you said to go back over it. it's just frustrating to watch but there's a learning opportunity i mean again this is all forcing adaptability out of gcu and and they can just be calm they'll get these kills i, I guarantee they would have won some of those gunfights. Like, make, genuinely make Columbia College try to set these things up. Because I really do feel like a lot of Columbia's college pushes so far have been not that complex, Joe. It's not like we're running really in deep strategies, trying to force various defensive strong points. It's just kind of been like, walk in, guns up, check corners, and it's just been working out. So... You know, we'll see. Maybe there's a better opportunity here for GCU to bamboozle on this lower site. This last one turned into a bit of disaster. Um, so definitely an opportunity for them to, to put on a different face down here. Yeah, they can. And I mean, the last time we saw what happened, right? Phil just hopped in and killed two people on the room. And it's just GCU not really tight enough, right? They're, they're not playing trades off each other, not playing well off each other. They're just going for these solo swings and getting punished for it. I think Columbia have shown, at least to me, in this matchup so far, that they have the superior gun skill. It's just GCU needs to find the better moments to be able to take these fights because we've seen it. When they find their moments, Matumba and Klimps, at least specifically the two of them have been the ones finding them. That's when they've been winning these rounds. That's been the source of their success thus far. But the problem is, is if you're not playing together, you play that solo style. If Matumba ends up losing his one or Columbia have a little yeah. bit of a crossfire set up, that's not something really you're going to be able to win, right? So GC, you need to play better a little bit together. Try and get their trades going, see what they can do, play off of each other, and work some picks better. Because right now, gun skill, the gunfights aren't going their way. You know, and that's a, that's a, it brings up kind of an interesting point. You, you mentioned that the gunfights aren't necessarily going their way. I, I do think that's true. Uh, they need to maybe go back to the drawing board a little bit and just sort of focus on, you know, 
my little bog standard of ambush stuff. Matumba, by the way, I don't know if he got picked up by that drone, but he is going to reposition. Like he didn't fall into a gun site right there, honestly. Uh, as this is a wide roam here for a basement site, Matumba really trying to pick something up on the top floor. It needs to be super careful. Uh, it's such a dangerous portion of this map for a roamer because there are just multiple viewpoints where you can get caught and cut down. T sort of control here in main hall and they're certainly going to work here opening the top floor they've also got the hatch i think they might have used one of their exothermics to get that open and they're gonna now refocus downstairs as they go back to the bandit here there is no attempted bandit trick coming in oni with the brava on the cockpit side gonna go ahead and open this Jesus. up and there's the denial by Klimps, well executed and that puts an end to any attempt to breach the garage door and a big play for him, and that's just not going to get open. They're going to have to completely switch something around, but Matumba now holding it down on the dining side, does find a kill, and is still being a nuisance over here, preventing them from even pushing this, and now they're just going to have to funnel straight on down the blue stairs as Bozeroni finds one, but look at the setup. So many bodies everywhere for Trigger to have to worry about. Crosses right through, gets shot from the back, and that is the team play that I am referring to as Matumba. Finds a second one upstairs, okay, not able to find the, the third, but it's not going to matter as Land is now down in a 1v4 with only 10 seconds, so we're with or virtually impossible to win. And GCU finally putting it to action, something they should have done five rounds prior. Well, a good effort there by GCU. Uh, at least keeping it even Stevens coming out of the defensive half. Oregon is one of those maps that does fluctuate a little bit. I think it's genuine, generally attack or sided, but 3-3 is fine. You know, reset the reset the, the sides now. And if you're sitting on the side of Columbia, I think you're pretty happy with everything that kind of went your way right there. Now that the sides are reversed, though, I'm interested to see if GCU's kind of real aggressive pattern of play is going to come into this, Joe, whether they're going to be hyper aggro Defenders in the way that they take these attacks or whether we're going to be looking at something a little bit more methodical. And it's sort of hard to tell from that initial attacking Defenders operator lineup, down. though there are pieces of what I would consider to be sort of a rush strat in that, right? Oh, it's Traeger drops again. Yeah, but they don't need it, clearly. They're actually better without him. No. <laughs> I think that's statistically proven at this point. They had a flawless the only round that he be. didn't play. So you're right. I think they did. Uh, so I'm pretty sure statistically they're they're probably licking their lips, licking their chances right now. Ten seconds left. But I I mean a three three split for GCU on defense, not the worst Five thing in the world. Chalet right. is historically an attacker sided map, and it is Columbia College's map pick. Attackers but for GCU, the they have to take this opportunity. You have a five e four chance to take a lead. Didn't call a reho, so this round is going to go through. We'll see if uh, we'll see if GCU able to capitalize. Unfortunately, last time they weren't able to, but we'll see if they uh, see if they make a difference at least on the attack. Yeah, Landis there trying to go for a bit of a spawn peak, kind of to be expected. Clips on the low ground on the map, burning a hole here through the garage wall. That gives them another vector of attack should they choose to use it. Landis is about to figure that out post-haste, though, and yeah, sure enough. Will he challenge? He does. The MPX, so accurate in those gunfights, will not deliver Landis this time. Matumba picking up his 10th kill of the match. Matumba has been an absolute force of nature here for the GCU side. Nearly gets caught looking right there as Nubs goes flying back up to the library corridor. Oni picking up another one here. Oni attempting a long-range engagement. He'll backpedal as well. Well, come back to those ivy stairs and the amount of real estate being occupied here by columbia gets smaller and smaller with each passing moment yeah matumba's just been so good on the entry for them but that is the key to our going down now at 3v3 you still have clips up unfortunately you don't have matumba up though and that's really been the source of almost all of your kills thus far but bozarini uh, or bozaroni excuse me i am so sorry i'm so sorry Finds another one. Klimps gets another one. That's a 3v1 now for them, and it's all down to Oni on top Mez. They still have that cam to work with, so that's a lot of information coming through. Gonna have an opportunity to find the first, but not able to do it. Yes, he does. He does clean up the kill. That's an example going down. That piece of information gonna come through as well. So Oni has eyes on one of these players. That Mez cam gonna give him all the information on his flank that he's gonna need. So just finding the second player 
is also important. Is this bomb now going down? Ooh. Bozo Roni finds a nice shot onto Oni to clean it up, and GCU do find the round, give themselves a lead on Chalet, and hopefully with Columbia College, they can keep all five of their guys in the lobby. Indeed, and now GCU Purple picking up that one sort of round leg up. Traeger is back, so it'll be a full 5v5 on the next round. Hopefully. We'll see here uh, <laughs> what, what they're going to choose to run at this with. I mean, again, I thought it was going to be a little bit rushy, but they, they went for a more methodical approach, which I think was really to their benefit, Joe. Uh, Kichiro bringing out the gridlock and then Klimt's coming in on the grim. This has been a, a sort of a combination of attackers that has looked progressively more popular uh, as time has gone by. Really love to see gridlock getting the play, Joe, honestly. I do as well, right? It has the nades to work with. Um, located that's always a plus to have, but at least for me, right, GCU, they're doing what Columbia College, I, I at least think should have done, right? Playing a lot slower, methodical. Their utility usage is really kind of forcing them to, you know, move. It's forcing Columbia College to get uncomfortable, move around and take fights that maybe they aren't the most comfortable taking. And that allows GCU to take those easier gun fights that you do get on the attacker side on chalet and even though you did have the 5v4 columbia does have to get aggressive find those picks back but i still like the overall usage of that utility just from that kind of style and force columbia to make those mistakes and just allow yourself to dictate the pace and dictate everything that's going on yeah that's a very good point and you know dictating pace is so important right for both sides you really want to try and set kind of your tempo for not only yourself and how you want to execute but also the tempo for your opponents as well something to keep in mind there as these sort of uh, operations persist and you'll see that too sometimes teams when they do bring out those rush chats and stuff all it is is just messing up the basic tempo of the attack to really catch your opponent off guard it's a very uh more like a technical way of describing what it is but it is still what you are doing Matumba there droning out up in the master bedroom will presumably come through Landis waiting so patiently swings that and gets the kill and then gets out of dodge falls all the way back to the coverage there of Traeger who takes a couple of shots here at Kichiro trying a Kichiro lights nubs up I'm not even sure how he hit that headshot but he hits it nonetheless and the fight on the top floor continues it's a beautiful shot but another pick that really doesn't need to go through and now TCU not just have the control that they need to start working towards pinching out library but they have a pick back and they're able to get maybe another one that is Klimps finding the down onto the stairs and that's an opportunity for them to start pushing Landis does find it is able to fall out and that is the top floor for GCU mostly found as a nade comes through the full flash tracker not even knowing where he's at as Clemps finds it able to finally confirm that kill and with a minute 15 left they do have the top floor it's now going to be on GCU to find out their way to execute onto this bar site. A little bit of a weight coming in here. Phil underneath, looking back and forth, holding that black mirror. Oni in a position to strike, I think, a little bit more immediately as Example sends the drone in. And sure enough, Klimps gets clipped right there. Example coming back for the res very quickly. Phil pulling the nitro, looking for it. That's got to be successful. It is. Finds Klimps, who is running away. The revive will not stick. And now example slow crawling down the hallway stairs right there the entryway stairs looking good drone coverage coming in phil getting engaged i think they're trying to draw him back into ichiro's ichikiro's gun sight and a little bit of a wait here example is pushed all the way up phil gets caught ichiro getting caught from the other direction oni the one who finds the pick the uh, gridlock is down. Oni fighting their way around the door, trying to double back. Doesn't know which way to go. Example, the only one who's here pushing up. Can they get the res? That's a real question. No, they're just going to try and hunt this out. Literally chasing the frost around. They get the loop to loop the drop in. Example can't find them. And some great Columbia College play right there to get that round win. Very close for GCU, but not able to find that end goal and where they want to put the bomb down and prioritizing getting over more towards lobby and not able to find the kills in time and not having the case either and gcu do lose that round it's better from columbia but 
GCU, you, you would like them to at least be a little bit better on the entry, right? Prioritize getting Matumba a would. little bit more of an actual gunfight, right? Like, if he ends up coming in through that big window and has a real chance at that gunfight and just loses it, that's one thing. But to get him with how much impact he has had, especially early on in these rounds, you gotta give him a fighting chance in those engagements because those entry picks are what really have kept you in this game so far and not giving him a great chance at one is kind of not the best thing and even then right you saw it it went down to that 2v1 that they ended up losing you gotta wonder how much different it would have been if you had an ash to engage in the top floor and maybe get that control a little bit quicker or a, with giving away less picks back yeah that's a very good, very good point, honestly. Um, and you look now kind of at, at the way that this is going. It's such a back and forth here. You really think there's got to be some sort of opportunity for one of these teams to get a leg up. Like, I, I genuinely think the first team, well, we're getting close to match point now, but to be fair, or map point. But I genuinely do think the first team to get a leg up in this match like two rounds up is is gonna win i i think that's just the nature of how these kind of slug fests go whether or not that's gonna be gcu purple or columbia college i think remains to be seen only playing a bit of a dangerous game right there but not too dangerous is batumba opening up some windows and some walls just trying to make more entry points here for the eventual press I'm mean, curious to see what GCU Purple's sort of strategy is here in this situation to isolate people like Oni, who's playing that Solarium position, and allow them to, to get in and, and get stuck in. I feel like we're in unfamiliar territory here, with nobody dying in the first minute. Right, it feels like that the pace, at least early on in the round for both of these teams, has been them wanting to find those opening engagements very early, and I guess that counts. I could suppose that counts. That was a really that was a that was an audible right there. I don't really know how to how to respond <laughs> to that. You, you know, I don't really like I really willed that into existence, but it's not gonna matter. It's still GCU trying to find a way in on the top floor. Those are Roni wanting to get aggressive here. Oni does find one. It's Phil getting aggressive and not able to find it. Bozeroni finds an example, gonna find the wow. trade as well as Landis trying to find that. But that's not going to work out for Columbia College. They're going to have to try and get at least a pick or two back on the top floor. And that's going to be Oni looking for it. Decides he should leave. And that is not an engagement he wants to take. And GCU, that could have been very bad for them. But able to come away with a 4v2. A minute left still. This is where they struggled on the last round. We'll see if they can change and get a good execute in towards sight. Oni here holding the sight line, waiting at the bottom of the stairs for someone to come down into Trophy. Traeger there as well, pretty much looking the opposite direction. Both of them in a very unfavorable position right here as they get pinched from both sides. Just a matter of time. They're really, you're looking at GCU right now and you're kind of wondering how they're going to finish this off. They are kind of running out of time, for lack of a better word. Out comes the exothermic charge. Kitro up above, so not in a position to lend immediate gunfire support. And you're wondering why there's no trades coming through here. Bonesaroni popping. Traeger gets one. Oni gets another. And are you kidding me? The 4v2. Won by Columbia College. Great defensive effort by the remaining two defenders, Traeger and Oni, holding that site locked down. It's great, but if you're going to execute towards the main wall, why have two players upstairs? What are they watching? Like, if you're going to have it through, right, you need the coverage. You saw it. When Oni found one kill onto a player on Breach, it completely ruined everything that was going on for the attackers. They had two players not really in a position to help each other out. And, I mean, there they go. They're, they're, down, they're down from a 4v2, and they lose another round that they probably shouldn't just from a lack of ability to execute onto the bomb site. And that gives Columbia that 5-4 lead on their own map pick. It does, and I mean, again, that's like a round. Oh, it's uh, so unfortunate. Uh, you feel like that round should not have gone that way. You know what I mean? Like, hey, you're looking at it for GCU Purple, and you're kind of wondering, hey, guys, like, 
come on. <laughs> like, that's a round we should have won. That's a round we should have won. But they didn't. So you got to look, you know, back to back to what went wrong, try and adapt, try and come into it a bit of a different way. As we're waiting here on this tech pause, poor Traeger cannot seem to keep that computer connected, which is unfortunate. No, he's still in. It's his roommate this time. It's Nubs. Oh, not it's able his to roommate stay in. this time. Okay. It is. It is. But yeah. at well, least for me, go. I, you know, as a player myself, right, you kind of understand the, the mental side of what's going on. And, you know, losing a round like that maybe once, that 5v4, mm -hmm. is one thing, right? But that's two rounds yep. in a row where you have – at least a multiple man advantage going into your execute and you lose. That's, I think, what, the second or third time where you have an actual 5v4 from the start of the round and you're unable to close it out. Things like that, it's hard. Like, you can, you're, you can have a very good composure, very good mental fortitude. Yeah. But things like that, at some point, begin to really stack up. And they do. you got to wonder do. where GCU is at, at least mentally, continuously losing rounds like this because... If I'm them, at least somewhere in one of their minds, right? In the back of their minds, they're probably sitting there going, guys, we realistically should have won this map already. This should be over. We should be getting ready to get on to Oregon. And looking at it that way is a very, you know, horrible thing to do. But at some point, it's just, it's how it goes, right? It, it just, it stacks up to that point. And GCU really need to do something and do it now to try and get themselves right back into this game mentally. 10 seconds to go. Yeah, they, they getting themselves back into the game. I mean, that's just, again, I stand by it. First team to go up by two rounds. If that's Columbia College, I'm pretty sure they're going to win this out. So GCU Purple has to continue to try and hold them by the belt here, right? Like, they absolutely have to. And that's a rough start. Bonzeroni down early on. Bozzaroni, the Finca as well. So the healing boost off the board right there. And that is a rough way for this to open up here for the members of GCU Purple. Yeah, and I want to give Oni so much credit. I think that's him recognizing that GCU, the mental may not be the best it's been so far. So going for a play like that, maybe not something that GCU is prepared for and really gets you in the dumps when you lose a pick like that. So Columbia doing a really good job at playing around their environment thus far and Getting themselves another advantage and trying to uh, trying to get themselves onto match point early on. Yep, that's what they need to do. I like just bust it open. Now you got that opening pick. You need to capitalize on that and just literally run this one into the house, right? Like that is genuinely what must happen here for Columbia. They do not want to pass this opportunity up. They cannot throw a five four of their own. Example here in the solarium knows there's defenders present nearby. Phil playing an increasingly dangerous game on the low ground. The floor's exploding, but Phil's holding tight on it. Kichiro down now, and that's two members out here for the side of GCU Purple. This is starting to run away with them, but there's the clapback. Clemson Matumba. Matumba finding another one. Takes Traeger down, and suddenly it's a 2v3 almost as quickly as the side of GCU Purple went down. They're right back in this with ferocity. Yeah, but you see both Columbia College players actually getting aggressive over on this side of the map. It's Nubs walking up the West Main Stairs, and it's Phil still... Finding himself inside of Kitchen Dining. They're just going to fall away, but Nubs takes down the player trying to hit directly towards Sight. And GCU again have the man advantage and Sight control if they had that information. But Columbia finding the kills once again, leaving example in a 1v2. And Columbia playing that scenario so, so well and leaving GCU wondering what the heck just happened. A good opening there by example, throwing that shot into the floor and giving him a new angle of attack. I don't think he realizes there's another defender lurking kind of on the opposite side of that. So he'll go ahead and peel off and Columbia holding their line yet again and really got to admire it. They've done a great job here adapting. There's the drop and example is done and Columbia College moves up to map point here, Joe, and they are they are just trucking along. They have not been discomfited. They have not been put on the back foot by anything that GCU has been able to muster against them. Yeah, and I think that's Columbia College, right? They've made the play style adjustments that they've needed to, and GCU kind of doing the exact same thing. I think the struggles that we're seeing right now are struggles that we've seen 
throughout most of the map, and I think Columbia, at least from what we just saw that last round, the difference in play style between that round and the first, a huge, huge thing. And that's kind of the way Siege is, right? It's kind of a a game of uh, a game of adjustments. I like to call it a chess match. And right now, Columbia seems to be the only one playing in that chess match. Defenders, protect your body. Yeah, I, I think it's, kind of, it's harsh, but perhaps fair. Uh, it does feel a little one-sided every once in a while. I mean, there's been great burst of energy from GCU, but the the rounds that they needed to they needed to win, the rounds that it really would have put them over the edge, they just could not find the right answers on those rounds. Uh, and that that is really the the thing that has weighed them down. I mean, if you go back and you look at a couple of those five fours, Joe, and you know there was a couple of them. I think there was two that they lost. Well, how many rounds are they down by right now? Two. So uh, that's just that's just the way that breaks down, and it's not in their favor. And hard for me to imagine that they'll be able to dig themselves out of this, just given the the way things have been ending up here. Attackers are moving to defuse a bomb. Yeah. And I think at least you, you just look at the, the comp that GCU is bringing, it's much of the same. So I'm not sure that that adjustment is going to come through. I, I'm not sure I like them clearing all the way across, right? There's not that much utility for them to try and do something like this. They have the Brava that they've neglected to use. You have the Flores that they've neglected to use. Kind of going for that old school style of siege with new operators, right? You know, with the gridlock changes and the Finca changes, that's your nades. But it's still that old school play style of taking a cross and burning where they could just bring the Brava, they could just bring the Flores and get rid of all of these things, even the Twitch for the Miras, right? Because they don't have anything to watch for it. So I think those are adjustments that they could have made that they have neglected to so far. And that's just going to be Columbia again, at least to me, having an advantage because GCU doing much of the same of things that just have not worked thus far. A good effort there by Oni to clear these stairs just a little bit. Oni playing that long sight line actually has open shots, but doesn't quite see them. Example still gets clipped. Landis now having to clear some more of those track stingers. On the other side of the map, those things just seem to get everywhere. So out comes the breaching round here from the Ash. Map point here for the members of Columbia. They just need to get ahead early on and win this out. Traeger drops. There's Nubs picking up that kill on Ikichiro. Klimps, though, quick to even it back up. Takes Nubs down in response. Example will drop, though. CC Oni's been hunting Example for a while down there in main hall, and he will find it. Here comes Landis sneaking in on the backside. Catches Matumba absolutely cold. Klimps is dropped, and it's just Bozero only left in a 1v4, and it would take a miracle. Can Bozeroni pull it out here on the balcony? One frag grenade left in the pocket. Six and seven, his record for this match so far. Dropping all the way down to approach the game's window directly here with about 50, 40-ish seconds left on the clock. And that's Columbia College getting aggressive just at the right times, finding the openings, finding the gaps that GCU had left for them, and that is just great, right? That That's what I'm talking about on Chalet. You have to find your moments. Take your moments. Take the gunfights when they are available to you. And that's two perfectly timed things from Oni and I believe Nubs to find those kills to try and get themselves an advantage in the round. They get that advantage in the round. And now GCU falling down to one map to zero and have to win their own map pick of Oregon if they want to have any chance of winning the series. The movement's going back and forth right there, and it'll be Oni who runs out and gets the kill, and that is that. Curtains there for the side of GCU Esports. Columbia College putting together an amazing, good defensive effort here. Yeah, what I maybe look like 50-50 gunfights, they're not 50-50 gunfights. They're maybe more like 70-30s, 75-25s. I don't remember if anybody at home remembers the Pengu rule back in the day, the ranked rule, <laughs> uh, which, I mean, kind of is the meta right now, and very, very much so is relevant to today's version of Siege where you shouldn't be taking 50-50 gunfights as a defender, even as an attacker, right? You should be trying to take any gunfight that is 70% chance or higher for you to win. There's no such thing as a 50-50 gunfight. If it's a 50-50 gunfight, refrain from taking it. Don't do it. Play safe and then take your opportunity. And for me, that's what Columbia was doing, right? They took their opportunities to find their 1v1s, isolate them, 
make sure that they're not getting traded and just being in an advantageous spot. And that's why a lot of the gunfights went their direction and overall why the map went their direction. Yeah, and, and I, I agree with that. I, I think that that mental calculation of kind of when and when not to engage was definitely in favor of Columbia College most of the time. The good news probably for GCU Purple is I feel like that is a relatively solvable problem, right? Like it just requires a little bit more of a different sort of tempo and a little bit diff more of a different engagement. Both of these teams, I think, struggling a little bit too kind of create situations where they can engage with an advantage it just seems to happen more to gcu than it does to columbia as the bands come through here on border fenrir and mira going off on the defensive side ying and dokai be the same that we saw on the last map they go out here for the offense nothing too surprising pretty bog standard across the board and it will be gcu attacking into one of the hardest uh sort of defensive sites in the entirety of rainbow six c so probably not something they're particularly excited about hmm. yes you know who's up again flores Ooh. flores is up again and you know who's yeah, not bringing true. him again? Defenders, protect your body. Probably, uh, I'm going to go out of here and see GCU. We're not bringing Flores. I think that's something that at least I'd like to see, I think. Right? Like, Columbia's yeah. not bringing... I mean, they are bringing Mute, but they're not really bringing too much to stop droning coming through. It's not something that they accounted for on Chalet, and not something they need to account for on Chalet. If you're GCU, you've got to switch something up, and they're running stuff so similar. To what they did and this screams front take they're clearing this map and going for a front take that's what i'm looking at right here 10 seconds to go i think you're probably right i, I think that's what they're looking for as well uh Five that's all to the tools that you would want in that scenario then again i was consistently thinking we were going to see some sort of rush coming out of gcu with their operator picks on the last map and they have just they just did not did not go for it so don't watch matumba example kind of playing off coming in past the police fan there kind of looking for this engagement they might they actually could catch phil looking if they're if they're smart about it and i think that's exactly what they're going to try and do matumba rolling the drone forward example gets caught and that i believe was that engagement i was talking about with phil right there as he'll fall back towards the bomb site so that should help drive these roamers down and i think they may have just sort of in uh unintentionally let's say gain control right there of the top floor the first floor i don't think there's anybody else to really challenge them <sighs> not quite yet not quite yet but i think columbia college uh, they're doing a lot of what they did last time right they're not forcing any gunfights early they're forcing gcu to take map control set up and execute and that's when columbia college has found their time to get aggressive and with only a minute going off, it is an efficient clear for the most part. You still have Columbia in that Z Hall area, so Attackers it's looking like at least for GCU they're going to have to finish backside because there's a player inside of security and there's a player top freeze. That's just going to have to be an area of the map that they decide to not push at all. And quite frankly, I'm not sure they're going to need to. They're trying to jam things up down there with Oni and just keep that smoke kind of engaged. What is this? What is this? Nubs just walking and he's gonna get Example. No, he bottles it. He doesn't land the shotgun shot. And Example runs back right there, still alive. A lucky, lucky man. But still a 5v5 here, 1 minute and 20 seconds. Neither of these teams establishing any real good positioning or speed. Matumba using that Finca boost to just slide in right there. Bozzaroni preps the fire grenade. Clips has the fire bolts, the smoke bolt, I should say. It goes in. A little bit of mislabeling. That's all good. Clips drops. LMG comes up. Clips looking for targets. That would have been a good rush if he could have caught somebody out. He does. He catches Traeger. But Matumba is down. The 4 to 4 here. Clips is deep in the heart of the enemy territory. Nubs coming across gets taken down by Kichiro. A lot of violence across the board. Kichiro is chained out almost immediately. And then the shotgun will claim Clips. No, Phil claims Clips. That's just back and forth violence and at the end of it all the team still standing on round number one is columbia college yeah, and i think it's gcu again showing their inability to execute onto the site columbia gave them the opportunity they gave them the map control and gcu again not able to convert on that chance and 
it's again another attack loss that in my eyes maybe shouldn't have went that way maybe Klimps after finding that kill onto Trager could have pushed up and pinched out elbow if he wanted not able to do so and never clearing out the player in hallway either so just a couple of mistakes GCU not fully clearing out everything that they should have Columbia causing chaos towards the later Defenders stages of that executing overall getting themselves around win and starting hey, off Mike. Oregon in a pretty comfortable spot and it's still that play style change Corbick that is working out very very nicely for them ever since that second half of Chalet yeah I, I agree and it, it is uh it is really working quite well um just kind of violence and, and action coming in right there normally we don't I don't like to get that hype on round number one but boy they were they were throwing themselves right into the guts of a, a straight up brawl on that map uh so maybe a little bit of a different pace here on this next one I mean I really admired and I will say that Joe I really admired what GCO purple was doing when they were kind of dropping in and, and getting aggressive like Clemson in particular that was a good play it's just unfortunate that they weren't really able to follow up on that very kind of aggressive entry essentially uh, and it all just kind of dripped away one by one yeah I think that is a good thing for GCU to note they're kind of halfway there right the Aggression needs to come through. A lot of the parts of this meta is hitting gaps, taking your opportunities, and that aggression catching Columbia off guard a little bit because GCU so far have always been on their back foot in this series. Haven't really done anything to keep it from going on, and Matumba does find the Solus. That is a big kill. They're not going to know that there is a second player, and this should be a freebie as well for them. Yes, it is. Columbia do trade it, but getting rid of that Solus Corvic is a very, very large pick, but I still like it. GCU still getting aggressive and still pushing the pace a little bit to not just allow Columbia to be very, very comfortable in the pace of the game. Oh, good kill by Nubs right there with the shotgun, but Nubs is in a uh, sort of inescapable spot. An example is happy to clean that trade uh, up easy as you please. Bozeroni here now advancing over towards Trophy, but they've got Oni just sitting here in Attic, and I don't think uh, they're particularly well versed in the Warden's position. The quick peek right there, and they are certainly not as Oni picks up a headshot and shuts example down. And looking to be another round heating up here for Columbia College. Akichiro trying to back their teammate up as the drone comes forward. They're just looking for any opening they can take advantage of. But this defense from Columbia looks solid. It does. I think Columbia, they've done a pretty good job for the most part of just finding, again, their opportunities to get aggressive. Just walking out Master Balk, taking a 1v1 onto a hard bridge is crazy crazy thing to be able to do is to keep Chiro finding one does get a kill that is Phil a little bit of a lack of discipline but it's not going to matter as his two teammates Trager and Oni finding the last two kills of the round and Columbia College a 2-0 lead and GCU slowly but surely slipping away in this series. Now a rough round for GCU Purple. I think that's one that they won't uh, they won't want to take to the bank anytime soon. They're going to want to watch that back. I think it is probably the truth of it. Um, just pushing into that really sort of solid Columbia defense. I mean, they tried at the tail end there to make that work. And I, I will say there's a little bit of like admiration on my side for how they tried to flexibly, flexibly play a very difficult scenario. But it just doesn't work. And then Columbia College's lines are way too well established. And there are issues that are cropping up here, I think, in a lot of what's happening um, with the GCU side. You know, the droning and stuff. I mean, you should not be sort of peeking into that attic sight line. You should really have gotten a good idea via some form of intel gathering that there is a warden sitting in there. That way you're not running into a situation where you have to face check that and potentially lose an attacker right at a critical stage in the round. And it's little things like that that are really adding up here and making the GCU's life far more difficult than it genuinely needs to be. Bringing out the ram this time. I like that. A lot of salt breach coming out and not a ton of hard breach, I'm assuming. Yeah, Buck does have it 
equipped as that secondary, but it's a very big teller of what they want to do. GCU is going to want to take that top floor control and try and execute over towards Kitchen, it seems, but Columbia have a very extended hold on the upstairs, and I like that a lot. They're not going to let GCU or really make GCU's lives very easy in taking this top floor, but what does make their lives a little bit easier is taking down the castle of Nubs very early on. It's Matumba taking control of this entirety of the showers and dining side of the map. That's a lot of pressure for Columbia now to have to deal with as they're fighting off not just the upstairs, but now Matumba lurking over on this side of the map. Yeah, Matumba, that was a good early kill right there. Definitely a, a benefit to the team, right? That's something that they desperately needed. Example, getting a good position here on the top floor, and this is setting potentially up a really good attacking opportunity here on the tertiary site for the members of GCU Purple. If they can just sort of get all their pieces into place, they're going to rotate Klimps up to the top floor here as well. I mean, plenty of drones being sent on this top floor, and I don't think there's anybody up here. Like, genuinely, I don't think anybody's holding on to this. As you see Oni down in the kitchen, I think there are other members here nearby. Landis is rotating down through the basement, and Phil is holding a very aggressive position in shower hallway. So they can really take full advantage of having that top floor control as soon as they figure this out. Yeah, but I don't know if they're going to fully drone out this mute over inside of showers. And that could be a very, very bad thing for them here. But all the vert is coming through. That is a nice thing for them. They have the entirety of what needs to be cleared on this site area right kitchen security fully cleared out but that is clips coming away with that gunfight win and kichiro Beautiful. finding a quick double as well it's gonna leave oni left on his own with a minute to work with but gcu finally showing signs of life Oni slipping in, gets one, it's Klimps, good headshot right there, Oni rotating the other direction, gets caught looking, Bozeroni can only look so many places at once, and in that case he's looking left when he should have been looking right, and that'll be that, it's GCU finally getting themselves on the board there in round number four, though, uh, it was certainly a decisive, well, probably one of the most decisive performances we've seen. Yeah, at least from them, right, we've seen Columbia have a couple of moments of brilliance and a couple rounds where they've just looked fantastic but gcu hasn't really had any rounds like that and maybe it's them starting to figure it out at least a little bit right you had the early tempo with the the entry right you have matumbo getting that control early Defending getting that pressure early on that's a very good thing for them it was a very big strength for them on chalet but they also took their time and played that slow structured siege towards the mid round time period right not allowing themselves to give away a pick back and then when they get the information that they need to they execute early with over a minute and a half left in the round a minute 15 is when they start moving on finding all the kills that is something they need to do right having that quick pace early on was a strength that they had on chalet but it was the end round that they were just a little bit too slow taking your time in the mid round not a bad thing you don't want to give away picks back for no reason but you do want to at least get the execute through off of a good timing they do just that and that is a perfect perfect tempo for gc you will see if they can keep it up all right they're setting it up uh, as a pretty standard sort of defensive hold. You got Phil on the roam on the top floor. Again, looking for that early kill through the main doors. Won't find it. Can't blame him for trying. Nubs is up here as well. So everything that you would expect as Matumba comes in through the garage and tries to secure that hallway. Bozeroni, of course, playing the Flores here. They've actually got two drone operators in play. Both destroyers in their way. Nikichiro here blasting forward on this hopefully looking to take down maybe another cam in freezer picks up that mute jammer and that should give him a pretty good idea of what to expect as clips rolls forward here on a monte i like that it's them taking this area of the map very very early on and look at all that damage coming through that is a player going down on z and phil does end up getting taken down clint's gonna try and stay alive no he's not able to stay alive and all of these trades coming through it is a 2v2, a complete difference in attacker. the tempo. Matumba finds two, he's gonna sprint right on through the fire, but gives Trager a 1v1. And the case, it is all down example. Actually, no, the case is still in the lion's hands. 
but a minute and a half to work with and wow Corbin, that was a crazy very eventful 30 seconds yeah really honestly these moments where they just kind of flying in and getting these huge roiling brawls i mean it's another example of that perfectly illustrated example here trying to use those lion pings now he knows where his opponent is he's gonna go in for the plant traeger pushing forward runs right Jack, into Jack, it baby. example holding it strong traeger swings the corner he can't confirm the kill he does and once more columbia college snatching victory from the jaws of defeat right there just brilliant play from these individual columbia players to stay calm in these situations i mean they've just had that composure laid on in these rounds and GCU showing again that they're not able to close these rounds out. The amount of times that they've lost 2v1s, 4v2s, 3v1s, 3v2s, those man up situations is, it should be criminal, right? It should be punished yeah. by law in about 17 states <laughs> in the United States of America. But again, they, they, they let another round slip away in Columbia, take another lead. And again, GCU, you, you wonder, it happened on Chalet. Rounds like this bombs. do stack up. It happens, unfortunately. As much as, you know, run run from it as much as you want, it still stacks up. And subconsciously, GCU have got to find that top level of play that they found in that one round win and not let something like that completely slip away. Because again, that is a round yeah. that they need to be winning if you want to get back into the series. Yep, I, I couldn't agree more. I think a lot of these win it, winnable rounds have just gone right past, sailed right past GCU Purple. And I mean, I don't want to bag on them too hard. It's not why we're here. And yeah, they, course, I'm sure they know that things are going wrong, but it's just like, oh, time after time. And, you know, again, Oregon very defensively favored, but if you're sitting on the side of the GCU, you've got to look back to the round that you won and you got to think, hey, how do we repeat that same trick? Because when they won that round, Joe, it was decisive. We were talking like a 5-1, I think, at the tail end of it. There was no hesitation it was good execution overwhelming force and they have just not been able to find whatever it is the secret ingredient that allowed them to do that they have not been able to find it again no way nubs goes for that okay you know as much as i was saying gcu in those early rounds on chalet joe was trying a little too hard was a little high on their own supply that applies both way i don't i don't know what you're thinking right there that is way too over eager yeah, no, I, I, at least for me, with GCU, it's they're trying. You can see they're trying to push the tempo, but that also can warrant some sloppy play. And at least this round, we have yet to see it. But last round, that was a very, very big product of what was going on. And now, as we move forward, it's a four v four in Columbia College. A minute has gone by, even though they did lose their mute player, the one that was playing closet. Doesn't feel like they've lost too much control as Oni now finds one. Phil finds another, a great pinch from them, a little bit of a bait. Get the Ion into a bad spot, but Matumba walking straight into Big Window has oh, an no. opportunity to completely blow the round apart. But Oni finds a big win and Klimps not with his teammate to help it happen. And Columbia again in a very commanding spot and Klimps unfortunately has the world on his shoulders if he wants to bring this round back well clips now walking underneath i mean he's got to win a 3v1 he's got a slight advantage in the fact that oni is so weak right a, a stiff breeze would knock oni off his feet but this is a tall ass for any player clips Forced to destroy the camera right there. He didn't want to give up his position, but he was honestly trapped between the devil and the deep blue sea. Comes up swinging, comes up firing. There you go. Oni's down. Two more to go here if you're Klimps. He'll go ahead and go for the reload. It's the only wise and sensible thing to do. And then doubles back on himself. I'm curious what he's playing for here. He's got about 45 seconds. He might try and go all the way over to Big Tower and make an approach through uh, Attic, and he certainly will. This might work. This genuinely might work. The AK-12 roaring right there. Phil not going down. Unfortunately, they caught Klimps looking. He wasn't able to get that initial kill. Klimps dropping into Attic right now. Pushes up, checks those holes over towards Trophy. This is to get progressively harder and harder. He clips Landis. He can't find it. The pistol comes out. He drops Landis, but the trade is there from Phil. Very, very close from Klimps, but not able to get it. Now that's Columbia finding a 
one lead on their defenses, and they're going to have to go back to meeting and meeting and kitchen. It's where they lost last time in a very dominating fashion. So GCU, they do have that going for them. They could get that 4-2 split, get over themselves to their defense, but still, the way they've been losing these rounds, Corbick, I'm not a huge fan. It's just too sloppy from this GCU team in giving these picks back. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's it's just the genuine case. I mean, really, realistically, it was a very good effort by Klimps right there to win that out. But Klimps should have never been in a situation, right, where he was, you know, kind of riding the lightning there to, to keep the team dream alive. It's been a rough map for GCU. It's been a rough map for them. I, I don't know what more you could really say about it, honestly. They, they have not been finding opportunities. And if you look at the other side of the ball, Columbia College has just been all over them right like they're making good trades they're holding good positions that could potentially change the side swap i'm not gonna i'm not gonna rule that out and oregon again defensively favored but it really does feel like gcu is a little yeah, bit adrift second, right third. here and columbia college is more than happy to play off of that yeah and i also Five think it's um how do i word this how do i word this in the best way i think Attackers gcu have found the themselves a couple times where They've had the opportunity to get aggressive, right? Like with Matumba there, just flying in big window and finding one kill and really should have found two. But I think they've had these opportunities where there are gaps and they're seeing them, but it might just be one of those things where they're not confident enough to take them early enough in the round. And that's really the moments where you should be taking those gaps, right? It kind of completely using that as a way to clear the map. And it's not something they've done so far. And I think Columbia maybe lucky that GCU haven't done that because the gaps have been there. It's not like Columbia's playing perfect siege right now, but oh, GCU not capitalizing fully as Columbia again. Maybe maybe one player should have gone there. Should have, should have gone down there, but it's a 5v5. And as I say that, look at that. Couple of kills go right on through. Back and forth. Landis taking a little bit of a clip there. Klimps has lost a, loses a bunch of health. Klimps is caught in the master closet. He's down. Phil picks up another one. Example is down there as well. And round six, I think you can probably put that pretty firmly in the column of GCU or of Columbia College here, unless GCU Purple can pull something out of their hat. Bozeroni, maybe they can. Matumba jumps in, but the trade game a little too good right there from the side of Columbia College. They did get Traeger down, though. The grenade rolling in right there. They are looking for the one remaining member, and that is Landis. The drone attempted to come out right there. Landis is hiding over in kids' dorms. A couple of shots from Bozzaroni, who's going to have to go in, and I can't help but feel like we've seen this bit of tape before here, Joe. Yeah, and that is a player going to get picked up, and I think they're both there. That has got to be audio for Bozzaroni, and no. just staring at the Ugh. brother. Like I said, it feels like something that we've seen that situation before, and I mean, we genuinely have the 2v1 there doing no favors to the remaining player of GCU, and now a complete side shift and maybe an opportunity for Purple to fight their way back into this because they are going to have to absolutely climb Mount Everest here, uh, get four round wins if they want to keep this even and even get a sniff of map point. <sighs> I think... There are some moments that too are Defenders to be noted. I think GCU, Matumba again, finding an opening, but his teammates not following up. He's just doing it on his own. Taking all these gunfights, walking his way. Obviously, the site was not top floor. It was meeting kitchen, but still, when you have a player hitting a gap like that and taking these fights, you have to help them. You can't just stand yeah. there and sit there and, and let him continue to take these gunfights. He needs help. And again, the, the round before it was Klimps. This round it was Bozzaroni. You've got to hop in the window. The, the player inside of kids is very clearly killing your teammate. Just hop in. Help your teammate because he's making the play for the second consecutive round in a row, providing you a lifeline. And instead of trying to help out and recognize that that is your only win condition, you sit there scared. And look at Columbia College now. They're going to be the ones to try and rush. They're going to catch GCU completely off guard. 
Good heavens, it's just Columbia College a step ahead in almost every way as they have all this control. Oh, no. And Tracker walks right on T1, nobody watching it at all. And GCU. Oh no. They're trying. I mean, they're trying to fight back, but they just cannot find it. It's too fast, too much, too soon. And I don't think GCU Esports expected that at all. I think that was completely, completely unexpected play by Columbia. And you know what? Credit to Columbia. They've had their pulse on the tempo of this match the entire time, Joe, and they exploited it perfectly right there to push this to map point and match point. Yeah, that's the second time, right? Because only before map one, there was that 5v4 round that they blew the 4v2 right um mm -hmm. and they end up winning the round then the next round only gets a spawn peak kill and they completely wipe them the next round and moments like that i think only is really good at reading the game at least from what we've seen the pace of the game and understanding Attackers need to when and to take spawn. advantage of the mental game and understanding that gcu might be a little chalk they're not going to be ready for a play like that and very clearly they weren't and columbia again it, it's just perfect it's perfect play and only I don't know if he was the one who made that call for it was someone else, but I really hope it was Oni and maybe going for it again. The adjustment is there with the Goyos, but maybe, maybe they beat him this time. Maybe they beat the Goyos out. You, you, you cross right through it. As long as the, the Blitz gets on the other side of Elbow, there's a chance. Yeah, there there is. I mean, that, that is just rough. I, I, I feel so much sympathy for... Uh, GCU purple right there because I, I don't see any way that they would have expected that. I mean, nothing coming out of Columbia has shown their their exactly. willingness to run that kind of composition. But that elbow uh, you were speaking about there, Joe. I mean, it looks mighty vulnerable right here as another rush coming down the pipe. And for GCU purple's sake, I, I hope they're expecting this. The Volcon going off. They're gonna eat it. They're gonna come straight through. Example rotating over right here. There's the first kill. Bozeroni finds Traeger, but Phil and CC res and Oni respectively getting their kills back the opposite direction only is dropped by matumba on the long shot and that should bring an end to this phil is caught looking as well and now nubs and landis are separated by the volcon fire as nubs has to make some hard decisions here about how they want to push this Klims finds nubs everything on the back of landis right now in a 1v3 is it winnable maybe is it likely probably not landis there on the long swing finds one now it's a 1v2 landis has to reload he sees the azami sliding across a huge pre-fire but he hits almost nothing landis doubles back on the other side and just gets clipped these tiny little bites taking life off of him and finally example shuts it down and I tell you what, your heart had to be beaten a little bit there if you were a GCU fan, because that was not a guaranteed win at all. No, not at all. Very literally seconds away from losing that. A couple bullets away from losing that. And still a very, very large hill to climb. But GCU, that was way too sketchy for them knowing because they were ready for that. I think every single player on GCU was in a position to counter that play. And... It seemed like they were ready for it, right? You had Klimps on bottom main holding an angle on it. You had the impacts coming through. The Goyos were ready, prepped up on the door. They were watching T1. They were ready for a play like that. But, I, I mean, Defenders, protect your still, from it, it got that attackers. close into a 2v1. I, I don't think it should be getting that close. No, I, I don't think it should be getting that close either. And I, the fact that GCO Purple won that, I think, doesn't necessarily indicate any i mean it's good don't get me wrong i just don't think it indicates anything positive for them uh in the in the broader scope of this match right like that was a desperation win it felt like a desperation win example nearly died um you can't be looking in that and be like yeah i am very confident about what just occurred and everything from here will be sunshine and roses uh because i just don't think that's going to be the way that it is uh ikichiro on the long run over by small tower here looking to see if any drones are coming in this direction so maybe they could try and catch a member of columbia college out early but it looks like columbia college will be focusing their attack elsewhere as they move up to the second floor site, a lot of forces moving over towards Big Tower. Sure enough, here comes Phil sliding in. And probably an approach going to come from Master Bedroom as well. That's usually how these things go. Indeed, that is the way things go. Um, you have the Solus out for GCU. Uh, something that maybe wasn't utilized as well 
as it could have been by Columbia, but it didn't really seem to matter as it was, you know, 5 1. And it does get taken down, but it's not going to matter that the kills go through. But look at Oni now, already making his walk, and they see that that there was a little bit of a gap. There were a lot of GCU players more over towards the white stairs, and that they could enter towards hit if they would like. They do just that, find a lot of damage and a kill. So, not the worst case for Columbia. They just have to work the map just a little bit better. Look at that, actually. Landis is on the bottom of White Stairs. Could walk right on up. Oni does go down, but it's Columbia College making their way forward. Phil does find one. It's the 3v3, and Columbia College now have the entirety of the map to work with if they like, and they're going to start working on pinching out the site. Landis on the slow approach with the knock, looking for an opportunity. Gets a couple of shots in right there. Landis doubling in on the other side, but there's nobody there now. Phil approaching from the other direction from Attic as Traeger is dropped. The 2v3 now and no more pinch play here as Matumba finishes off Phil. Traeger's already down. Everything on the shoulders of Landis. No frag grenades left. The Malusi Banshee giving it away. Landis can do nothing but exchange fire through that doorway and another defensive round going the way of GCU Esports. They've done it. They've done their job. They found a couple of rounds. GCU not looking the worst. These rounds are a little close. At least this one was a lot better than the previous one. But Columbia College just kind of trying to get into the map, not putting too much pressure everywhere as much as they could be. I think that's a, a big key word, right, for Columbia on what they want to be doing onto these attacks. It's something that they did oh so well on Chalet. But right now, not doing the best work, right? You want to try and get pressure on areas of the map. You want to try and have someone all over the place. Make GCU scared, right? Make these guys walk out into your gunfight. So I think that's something that Columbia College has to Defenders at least take a little bit more seriously this round. Try and daggers. look at creating a little bit more pressure. Even phantom pressure, right? doesn't even have to be real pressure. You don't have to stick a body there. Just open a couple barricades. You know, get some information here and there. Punish the fact that there is no longer a Solus up on the board. So get some drones in some areas, open some barricades, make GCU uncomfortable, and close out this series. Bomb located by attackers. Well, match point continuing to elude GCU, or sorry, I should say Columbia College, but uh, if there was ever a time that they were going to steal it, it would be right here on this tertiary bomb site. GCO Purple investing heavily in a top floor defense. And Kichiro up there effectively walling themselves out of the attic. Example was up there on the Valkyrie, keeping those cams displaced. Matumba is also on the top floor, though that positioning may swap a little bit as the round progresses. Bad news, though, for the members of GCU is that Columbia is pushing hard from the other side of the map, and this is where they are really not strong on the defensive side. Most of the utility was invested over on the Great Tower side, so example is kind of going to be the tripwire here, and then we're going to be really fighting for, or they're going to really be fighting for their lives over B. Unfortunately, Matumba down early. That means vertical control probably not far away from the hands of Columbia either. And getting himself stuck in a really, really bad spot. And look at all that vert coming out. That's the ram for you. Makes so much vert and makes so much noise. And now GCU with that man disadvantage, the player that has been their star so far. Taken down. Example goes down as well. Does end up putting down the thermite. And that's a C4 kill for Klimt's. So if they can find this confirmed kill onto the thermite, it's a very big moment for them, but looking like Thermite is going to be safe to get picked up. But, oh no, 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 he's actually on the inside. Not on the outside, yeah, now. Going to get picked up, but Corbic, still, you got to think GCU's chances in this round, not the worst thing in the world. Never mind, walks into a drone. <laughs> Nubs cleans it up right there, and it looks like GCU Purple might be at the end of their tether. Bozeroni tucked into a corner here of dining as the floor is ripped up above them and the members of Columbia swarm forward. The flash grenade out right there. Nubs firing away. Bozeroni trying to keep it together. Bozeroni and Klimps both getting kills. It's a 2v2. The coverage on the plant is not there and Landis cannot get the reverse kill onto Bozeroni to stop the plant going down. Now Klimps on the top floor here forced to keep his team alive with about a minute left 
as Landis swings up to the top floor. This is eminently doable here for the mute player. Klimps looking the other direction. Klimps gets caught looking. Landis finds the kill. And that is match point right there. And the end of the night for GCU Esports as Columbia College picks up a 2-0 win. They had their chance.